What's up, YouTube? Pink Reaver here, back with another Shotgun Let's Play. This time we're going to be doing Kirby Superstar. Um, some of you might recognize this from my channel, some of you might recognize it from my streams. Because Lord knows I've streamed this game a ton of different times. Um, so you might be thinking, Pink Reaver, didn't you already Let's Play this game? Like, you can't Let's Play this game again. To which I say, shut up, shiny magician, I can do whatever I want. Um, if I want to, if I want to replay this game, I will, because I love this game, and playing this game makes me happy. Um, and I could have been playing this game on my, uh, uh, Wii U, recording in glorious HD, but instead, because the Super Nintendo controller is just so much better for this, I am playing on my Super Nintendo. Uh, I was supposed to be able to jump between those guys, but I didn't. Watch out for the cow. Shoutouts to the cow. Um, cow, please. Um, so yeah, unlike any other time I've played this game, which is to say every other time I've played this game, uh, I won't really be talking much about what I'm doing in the game. I'm just going to be playing it until I reach the end, because it's just really fun for me to play this game. Um, so let's talk about other stuff, shall we? Oh, someone's blowing up my phone right now. Oh, it's Jenny. Jenny telling me about when she'll be over so we can record more Paper Mario. Anyway. Um, <laughs> that'll teach you. So, what were we talking about last time I did? I uploaded a video. Um, I want to say it was like how bad I am at Mario 64. <laughs> Oh, Evo! I was talking about Evo. Someone asked me um, my thoughts on top eight for Smash uh, at Evo, and when <laughs> when I uploaded that video, I actually had not watched anything of top eight, um, or when I recorded that video, um, I had not watched any of it while I was at um, while I was actually at Evo. I didn't bother. Oh, because I, I was like. Oh no, it, it wasn't that I didn't bother, it's that I, um, I was doing stuff on Sunday. Like, that's when I went out and did stuff, so I didn't have a time to watch it on stream. The only stuff I watched on stream was during lunch. Um, I watched, uh, I watched, what was it? Some of Guilty Gear and most of NBC3. So, I think I mentioned that at one point or another. Um, I have watched Top 8 since then. Um, it was not a particular surprise to me. Um, I had been keeping up with what was happening in the tournament bracket during the tournament, but not actually watching it. I sort of figured Hungrybox was going to be the one to take it, and in fact, I don't remember who I was talking to. I think it was Fly. It might have been someone else. Um, I said that I expect Hungrybox to take it, and the only person I could I could reasonably see be beating him would have been um, Armada, and obviously that did not happen. Um. Ow. Get him, bomb guy. <laughs> Goodbye. Um. Yeah, no. So, Hungrybox winning was not a surprise to me. He was playing amazingly that tournament. Um. Go away. The other stuff that, like, Mango not winning wasn't a surprise to me because Mango's been playing like shit kind of like the last year. Not like shit, but like, um, I think we finally reached a point where other players have sort of reached Mango's skill level and kind of eclipsed it. Um, it's been a, for people who haven't been part of the Smash community for a really long time, uh, or who haven't followed Smash for a long time, I want to sort of explain some stuff. Um... So, Smash has always been, uh, Melee, I should say, has always been in this weird state where there was always just one player who was absolutely dominant above everyone else. Um, originally, from like 2002 to like 2006, that was Ken. Even a little bit into 2007. Um, and then for like a year straight, from like, like 
around that time, the 2007 time. Um, oh, that was not what I wanted. Oh well, that's what it'll take. Um, we had Mewtwo King after that, right? Um, and then, pretty much immediately after Pound 3, it was all Mango. Um, and there was some contention about that. Like, East Coast was always like, no, Mutual King's still the best. You know, we haven't had proof. We have to have more tournaments. But uh, if we're being completely honest here, Mango just absolutely annihilated him at, like, every tournament they went to. Mango was untouchable. Mango didn't drop a single tournament, like, legitimately. There were a couple tournaments where he, like, lost in pools because he was literally drunk at the time. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, get out of my way, eye guy. <laughs> uh, so Mango was, like, untouchable from probably about 2008 till about... Honestly, like, 2012. Um... It would be a very long time until uh, Dr. PP started becoming, like, the player to beat. But right as that was happening, right as Dr. PP was becoming amazing as well, and was making himself, you know, uh, tournament winning, like, a viable tournament winning player, Armada and Hungrybox both started to step it up as well. And from that point on... Like, the number of players that could win a tournament at any given time had, like, drastically increased. And then we started getting Leffen as well, although Leffen is still, I feel like, the least consistent of all of them. Like, he's really good against the top five players. Like, he can win against those top five players consistently, but he can't consistently win against other players for some reason. Like, he'll drop games to players you didn't, you don't think he should drop games to. Uh, far more frequently than, like, PP or... Well, maybe not PP. PP's got his health issues right now, and he's not playing, like... Uh, he's not playing at his, you know, best ability, but... Um, Armada, Hungrybox, Mewtwo King, and to a lesser extent... I don't know if this will hit. What was hit? To a lesser extent, Mango now. Um... There's, and then Leffen, of course, still. Um, there are a lot of players who can, who can win tournaments now. Or, not a lot, but, um, this is really weird for, for me, though, because, like, like I said, I followed the tournament scene for a long time. Um, there being that many different players that can win, and everyone's like, you know, oh, it's just these five players. A while back, it used to only be Mango. Like, <laughs> people need to understand that. Um, so, top eight was still pretty interesting to me. Um, but not, like, amazing. It kind of went, you know, exactly how I expected it to go. No, you're in my way. No. Let's see what I get. Not what I wanted. I actually don't know what those two mix, mix into if I can let them go, so... I need you. Let's get this. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to say about Evo. I didn't really do anything else involving Evo. Um, I watched a lot of matches. I watched, like, Zoo's run, because that was cool. Oh god, I hate this power. This power is so bad. Go away. I will take literally anything over you. I'll take Bomb. Auto Scroller, yeah! Um... Oh, you know what we should talk about? Let's talk about Kirby. Because I'm playing Kirby. Oh, I should have... Uh, I should have... I should have, uh... Recorded this on HD. Just so I could have the, um... 60 frames per second. Because I'm only recording in 30 frames per second right now, and it looks ugly as hell. Um... So I always had this intention to make a Stuff Pink's like about... Likes about Kirby. Uh, but I haven't, obviously. Um, I just haven't gotten it to come out the way I want. Uh, I had to, I wanted to write specific things about it, and I never did. Oh, actually, hold on. I need to get rid of you, or else you're gonna fuck this up. I 
Let's go. Um, oh, I forgot there's another one right there. So, as you guys have more than likely noticed, I'm a huge fan of Kirby. Um, oh. oh man, this is really hard. Why am I so bad at this? I'm going to die before I can do that. Yeah, I died. Ah! There's a way to skip that boss, actually. Um, you have to have jet, which you can only get through mixing, but there is a way to do it. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Kirby. Uh, as you guys no, no doubt noticed, I talk about it a lot. Um, I own a ton of Kirby games. I wouldn't really call myself a Kirby fanboy, if only because... Um, there's a lot of Kirby games I think suck balls. Um, or at least a couple of Kirby games I think suck balls. You know what? You know what? Let's just fucking kill them the right way. Um, but I am a huge fan of Kirby games, and I've never really explained why. Um, but the thing is, the interesting thing about Kirby games is that I actually can explain it. Like, there's a lot of stuff when it comes to various games where, like, you can't... It can be hard to explain why they're good. Um, like, if you ask... There's a lot of series that are super, super popular, but if you ask someone why they're good, it, you'll get, like, weird answers. Um, if you ask, like, Five Nights at Freddy, I've asked someone why they like Five Nights at Freddy so much, and their answer is, like... Um, uh... Like, their answers are, like, wildly different. It's like, oh, because it's so scary, or oh, because this or that. Um, you know, I like the lore, or oh, because, you know, I love, you know, the huge community with it. Oh, I was hoping I avoided this. I'm really bad at this right now. Um... Oh, really? Did I really just enter the same stage? Can I exit? Exit a map. Oh, right. This is a, this is a Super Nintendo controller. Um, but yeah, um, for Kirby games, it's actually really easy to explain why these games are good. Oh, right, there's a plasma enemy already at the beginning of this map. Why do I forget that? Um, Kirby games are really interesting from a platformer platforming games sort of design perspective because Kirby games are one of the like very few platforming games where I feel like they really understand the abilities of the character when they design the levels um so as I'm sure you can note Kirby can fly <laughs> like everyone knows this already um and because of that it in theory, it would make, make it difficult to make a, a, a platforming game where, you know, there's difficult platforming challenges because Kirby can just fly over everything. Like, eh, I can just fly right here. Um, no, my power star. God damn it. Um, I'm getting fucked up, guys. But the interesting thing about Kirby is despite being able to fly you can't really break a lot of levels just via flying because the game takes into account the fact that Kirby can fly. So a lot of Kirby levels are like this. They have um, they have small corridors. They have roofs. They have um, they have caves. They have stuff like that. Um, oh, I'm gonna die. I don't get some of this. Okay, I'm still gonna die. Because I'm just plain stupid. Oh god. Don't kill me. Sorry. I'm trying to focus on not dying here right now. Which probably will not happen. I will probably just die. Um, and there's a reason for the, the way they design this stuff. Because if Kirby is in a limited space, his ability to fly doesn't break the levels anymore. Um, they also sort of forgo trying to make, um, trying to make, like, pitfall traps. Um, again, because Kirby can fly, so he can just get out of them whenever he needs. Um, instead, they sort of 
populate the areas with enemies that are on the ground and are cumbersome to avoid on the ground, but as well as enemies that are in the air or attack into the air to make them cumbersome to fly over. Um, which puts weight into using his, uh, his other ability, which is his copy ability. Um, let's go upstairs, or up the ladder. Um, and you'll see that a lot. There's a lot of enemies who seemingly only attack straight up. Um, and that is because... Or, not just enemies that attack straight up, but also, um, uh, there's a boss here, right? Yeah. No, oh, I almost screwed that up. Um, there's not just enemies that seemingly attack straight up, but also enemies who just, like, only seem to, to exist in the sky that can't do anything to you if you stay on the ground. Um, that's just the game taking sort of notice of the abilities that Kirby's ha Kirby has and not letting you break the game with them. Um, the other thing is it populates itself with um, vertical levels and underwater levels. Uh, some of the best underwater levels just in a platforming game, to be completely honest. Very rarely do I play a platforming game and not just absolutely fucking hate the... Um, the the water levels that are in them because they don't really like they're not really fun to play um kirby gets around this by having great swimming controls and the ability to use most of your abilities underwater um i forgot i always forget this let's go straight up first i think i just go straight up again um What was I talking about again? All oh, right, water levels. Um, this is something I feel like other platformer games do really poorly, especially Mario games. Um, slowing down your character is one thing. I mean, Kirby's a little bit slower in the water too, but taking away like freedom of movement. Oh wait, what am I doing? And like making it just cumbersome in general. I feel like that's not the way to do a water level. Um, Kirby's definitely slower in the water, but he still moves really freely. He can attack really freely. Um, as a character, he works fine underwater. And that's something that, you know, should really be commended. Um, the other thing, the vertical levels I was talking about, was takes advantage of the fact that, yes, Kirby can fly. Give me back my power. Um... And as such, normal um, normal horizontal level design doesn't work as well for him as vertical uh, design. Because again, since he can fly, you don't have, you know, pitfall challenges and stuff like that aren't going to matter to him. But if you, if you put him on a, you know, a vertical plane, suddenly you can add different types of challenges, like avoiding spikes, avoiding enemies, um take advantage of the fact that he moves slightly slower in the air than he does not or when he's flying than he does when he's on the ground. Um, oh my god, I cannot mash this right now. I'm really bad at mashing that. Okay. What were we talking about again? I, I, I lost it again. Oh, I should have done that the other direction. Oh well. Um, so yeah. Vertical levels. That's what I was talking about, right? Yeah, vertical levels. Um, it's just, it's rare for platforming games to really take into account the abilities that a character has. Um, I feel like for all of the good that Super Mario World has, and it has a lot, like Super Mario World is one of the best games ever made. I'm not going to say anything bad about that. Um... Most of the level design doesn't take into account the fact that Mario can have Yoshi or a, um, a cape feather. And because of that, you can sort of just break all the levels. Um, oh, shoot. Can't really do that with Kirby. <laughs> um, I mean, there is some ways to break the, the game. <laughs> I 
are some ways to break the game. There are some cool things you can do. Um, what's up, Power Star? It hit the invisible wall. Um, but there's not a ton. And most of the level design complements Kirby's abilities very well. And it even takes into account all of the multiple abilities you can have. Um, the one, ex the one like caveat to that is the wheel ability, which doesn't really work well in most stages unless that stage is built for it. Um, but they even sort of fix that in later games by adding the ability to jump with wheel, um, which kind of kind of helps. Ooh, how much time I got left? Ah, I got enough time to do this. I'm really bad at these, by the way. I hope you're not expecting to see, like, speedrunner strats when I do this race. Doo-doo. You know who's actually really good at this? My friend Julian. He, like... He, like, speedruns these legitimately. <laughs> I jumped too early. I'm like, am I there yet? No, I'm not. Um, like, he learned the speedrun strats specifically for Gourmet Race and for nothing else. Which I find hilarious. Also, can we give a shout out to the Gourmet Race 2 stage theme? Um, everyone loves Gourmet Race 1, but no one talks about how amazing Gourmet Race 2's music is. Ah, too much momentum. You can have that one. DDD, I don't care. Oh god. That's not what I meant to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a speedrunner of this game at all. I do not have the um, technical ability to do it. You actually have to be really technical to speedrun this game. Ignore that. That was not impressive. Going this way. Ah, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, and I lost the power? That sucks. Okay, well, this is going to be slow now. <laughs> like, really slow. Whatever. Let's just get to the end, shall we? I really wish I hadn't lost that power. This part's gonna suck. No, do not adjust your screen and no, that wasn't because it was 30, 30 frames per second. Kirby's arms just don't move when you mash that fast. Oh, I have way more time than I thought I did. time to finish any of these. Whatever, I'll start Great Cave Offensive, and I'll just save when I get wherever I need to save. Yeah, I know how Great Cave Offensive works. Shut up. I use Plasma almost exclusively when I play this game mode. <laughs> what the hell? There we go. Treasure chest. I also almost always miss something. Like, the last time I played, I missed this. And I had to go all the way through, because once... So, it is possible to go back once you've beaten the game. Um, like, once you reach the last screen, you can restart the entire cave if you really want to. Uh, which I didn't really want to. But I had to. Um... And because it was right there, I could just get it. But then you can't go back. You have to, like... Really, you fell through that hole? Fuck you. Um, you have to go all the way through the entire Great Cave again in order to reach the end. Luckily, none of the bosses spawn again or anything like that, but still. Go away, bird. Shining Birdo. 
This is really hard to do as fighter. I don't know why I'm trying to do this. I also don't know why I thought that would work. It is possible to hit this, but it's unlikely, so screw it. You know what? I'll just take bird. Bird is much easier for this. It is the word. That's another one where it's possible to hit that switch. Um, it's possible to hit it from underneath. Uh, thank you. Go down. I feel like I probably already missed a trigger. Nope. I just always feel like I, I'm missing treasure, because I always do. I always miss something. I think I've only had one playthrough where I, like... I, I was playing through... I was just kind of playing quickly and not paying a ton of attention, but still managed to get everything. Get out of my way. See, that's the flying enemies I was talking about. The Seder you sword. I really wish that, like, actually destroyed blocks properly. Cool. Now I have to get that treasure chest again. I think I can hit that block in here. Not that that really does anything for me, but I can do it. There we go. Why does that normally work? Echigo candy, yeah! Let's go down here. And we'll get the screwball. Get out of my way. Aw, right. that didn't work. I was, I was off on my position anyway. Oh well. Um, you can do that, that downward dash through the ground. Like, it's just sort of like a collision glitch and it causes you to um, crash through the ground when you do that. Okay, screw it. I'll do this the right way. Stay out of my way! I'm not even trying to hurt you. Quite the opposite. I'm trying to avoid you, but you're like, no, let's just fight Kirby. And be an asshole. Alright, so I should be. Goodbye. Um, I'm gonna get plasma, but then I have to get rid of plasma. And then I'm gonna come back and get plasma again. Swing and a miss. The Star Stone. Someone told me... Okay, so one of the only two Kirby games that I never... Not one of the only two, but one of the couple Kirby games I never owned was um, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, because it just didn't interest me at all. I didn't think it looked very good. Um, and people were always telling me, telling me to get it because it's like Great Cave Offensive. But the reason I like Great Cave Offensive isn't just because they like exploration in it, it's also because it's in Kirby Superstar, which means it has all the cool game mechanics that Kirby Superstar has, like the partner system and the, you know, the power-ups with multiple abilities that you can use. Um, those things don't exist in Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. All you've got is, like, whatever one attack your, your power happens to have, and maybe... Um, maybe, like, one or two more things beyond that. Uh, don't take my partner. I'm gonna need that power in a second. I'm gonna want that power. Ah, and there he goes. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to go back and get Plasma the hard way, then. Um, 
Because I don't think they offer plasma before the boss. Boy. See, the thing that makes this Kirby game so much better than every other Kirby game, or at least all the ones that aren't, like, um, Triple Deluxe and such, like some of the newer stuff, um, is how much more interesting the power... Yeah, I didn't think so. How much more interesting the powers in this this game to are to use compared to the um, the other games? Uh, Nightmare and Dreamland and Adventure get kind of a pass because they're the same game. Um, because it's the first game, um, they were literally introduced the copy mechanic right then and there. Uh, it'd be kind of weird for them to have already gotten in as in depth in depth as they did with this game. Um, but once this game came out, and, you know, you had all of these awesome powers with, you know, multi multiple functions and stuff like that, I find it weird that at any point they decided to go back. Um, and again, Nightmare in Dreamland is, you know, it gets a pass, because it, it was the first game. But, like, what the hell happened with, um, with Squeak Squad, or with, uh, Amazing Mirror, like... Why did we once again end up in basic-ass, boring powers build with those? Um, this guy's going to jump and try and steal my power. And there's going to be one more here in a second. There he goes. I got the one that was down there, right? Yeah, I did. Um, but yeah. Like, why did we end up with really shitty, boring powers again? And then, like, um, I think the worst of it was, um, Kirby 64. Because they had this awesome idea where, you know, you, you combine powers. But instead of doing anything interesting with it, they just give us a game where it's, like, really your combined powers are just a completely new, like, separate new power that only has one attack anyways, so it's like, whatever. Um, and then, <laughs> it's supremely uninteresting when you're using the, uh, like, the double powers, and it, no, no, okay, first off, it's really uninteresting when you're using the single powers, but it's even more, it's exactly as uninteresting when you're using the double versions of those powers, so, like, double cutter is just bigger cutter, double fire is just bigger fire, like, that's not interesting, guys. You didn't do anything interesting. Please do something interesting when you make powers. Um, I have this long spiel about why I don't like Kirby 64. I might, I might talk about that in the next game. Or in the next uh, video. Because if this is Stuff Pink's li Pink likes, that'll be Stuff Pink doesn't like. Um, but yeah, now that I can actually save, that's going to be the end for this one. We're at a little over 30 minutes. But that's okay. No one's going to hate me. Anyways... I'm going to save my record here and end this video. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Pink Reaper, signing out.